This is the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 2 Optimization Guide. You will get at least 10 to 15% FPS boost, fix any FPS drops, and fix stutters. And as proof, I use the same tweaks on a low-end PC to go from 100 FPS to over 270 FPS in Fortnite. So whether you have a high-end PC or a low-end PC, this guide will boost your FPS and lower your input delay. Starting off with the most basic settings which a lot of people overlook and miss out on a lot of performance. So open up the Epic Games Launcher, go to the Fortnite, click on these three dots and click on manage. Inside of here turn on the launch options and make sure to copy and paste this command from the description. As you can see that using this command does lower the average FPS a bit, however the 1% lows are much more consistent meaning it can help a lot of you guys to fix FPS drops and stuttering. Moving on to the in-game settings, I will go more in depth about these settings and I will also show you the benchmarks for each of these settings so that you can see which one works the best for your PC. So open up these settings from here. So under the display settings you have three options for window mode, full screen, windowed full screen and windowed mode. So on windowed full screen mode I was getting consistent around 110 average FPS and on windowed mode the average FPS jumped to around 125 which is a 15 FPS increase on average probably because of the lower resolution scaling of windowed mode. As for the full screen mode the average FPS were around 120 but they weren't dropping as much compared to windowed full screen mode and the windowed mode. You can also see from these benchmarks that the full screen mode is clearly the best even though we have more average FPS in windowed mode. The input response on windowed mode was horrible and the 1% lows as well as the 0.1% lows are also worse compared to full screen mode. However, these results may vary for some of you but I definitely recommend using full screen mode for the most FPS in Fortnite. Up next is the resolution. Now I always recommend that you play on your native resolution and go ahead and lower the 3D resolution if you want more performance. However, lowering this native resolution down to something like 1600 by 900 can also give you a huge performance boost as you can see from these benchmarks. Marks. But once again, this should be your last resort. Moving on to VSync, this should be always turned off. It, it does help with screen tearing, however, the amount of input lag that it introduces is not worth it. Then there is the frame rate limiter. Now, if you are struggling with FPS drops and stuttering a lot, then limiting your FPS is the best way to fix FPS drops. However, you shouldn't be using this in game frame rate limit, but instead revert unit statistic server to limit your FPS. So let's set up the revert tuner and then I'll show you the comparison between limiting your FPS from here and limiting your FPS from there. So Revert Junior Statistics Server comes bundled in with the MSI Afterburner and we will be using this software later on as well. So simply go down to the description and go to their website, then click on this final release and download it. Then you would install it as you would install any other software. Once you have installed the software and launched it, it should be down here in your taskbar. So simply open it up, then go ahead and show it. Then inside of here, go to settings and make sure that start with windows and start minimized are both checked. Then hit OK and then do the same thing for the Revert Unit statistics server, it should be started right here, but if it isn't, you can search it from the start menu and then open it up. Inside of here, make sure that start with windows is on, but now before applying this frame rate limit, I'll show you the comparison. So if I go ahead and use the frame rate limit inside the game to cap my FPS at let's say around 180, you can see that my FPS are capped at 180, however, they're dropping quite a bit. Also, the frame rate graph as you can see is not a straight line, and variation in this graph means micro stutters and FPS drops. Now let's open up the revert unit statistics server and go to the frame rate limit then type it 180 from here and hit enter. Now I'm gonna go back to the settings and set my frame rate limit to unlimited and this time as you can see that my FPS are once again capped at 180 however they are only dropping to 179 and the frame time graph is a complete straight line meaning there are no micro stutters or jitters and the game is running completely smooth. So this is the reason that I highly recommend you to always cap your FPS using Revit Tuner instead of the in-game frame rate limit. But before changing the rendering mode and showing you guys the benchmarks, let's move on to the graphics quality settings and set the quality preset to low, since these settings in DirectX 11 do affect the performance mode too. Once you have done that, the rendering mode that I recommend is of course performance mode. As you can see from these benchmarks that performance mode beats both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 by a mile, going over 300 average FPS while DX11 caps at 213 while DX12 capping at 187 FPS give or take. Also for AMD GPUs, a lot of people believe that DX12 will give you more FPS on AMD GPUs, which is completely wrong. Here are the benchmarks by Core Tech, which clearly label performance mode as the winner. And you can check out his complete video on the topic, link will be in the description. So go ahead and apply the performance mode and restart your game. And the final setting inside of here is the Nvidia Reflex. On Plus Boost gave me the best performance due to significantly better 1% lows and 0.1% lows, followed by off and then on. But this highly depends on your system configuration and your GPU, so make sure to test 
on as well since setting it to on tend to give better performance on most modern Nvidia GPUs. Moving on we have Process Lasso. This is a software that I have benchmarked in a previous video and I'll show you those benchmarks right here. As you can see that the average FPS remained pretty much the same, however the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows improved by quite a bit. This results in not only the lower latency but also fixes any FPS drops issues that you might be facing. So go down into the description and download Process Lasso from their website, then once again install it as you would install any other software. Once you have it running, simply go to the options and then go to CPU, then under Pro Balance, enable Pro Balance should be checked and then click on advanced options. Inside of here, simply go ahead and copy all of these settings of mine. I have explained all of these in detail in my previous video, so I'm not gonna go ahead and waste your time once more. After copying these settings, go to set excluded processes and add these three processes to make sure that we do not mess up with any of the Windows processes. Then hit OK, hit OK once more, go to options and this time go to memory, then enable smart trim should be checked and click on smart trim options. Once again, copy all of my settings from here and for this box, make sure that you type in half of your total RAM. In my case, I have 16 gigs of RAM, so I have typed in 8000, which is roughly the half. Then click on set exclusions and once again, copy all of these .exes by typing them inside of here and clicking on add. You can pause the video here, then hit OK, then hit OK once more. And now moving on to the Fortnite specific optimization. For that, you will need to make sure that the Fortnite is running in the background, then go ahead and open up the process lasso in front, go to the active processes and inside of here find the Fortnite client win64 shipping.exe. Simply right click on it, then go to CPU priority, then under always, make sure to set it to high. Right click on it once again and this time go to power profile and make sure that it is set to none since we will be using the ultimate performance power plan. Then right click it once more, under more, go to hot throttle, then under always, make sure that no throttle is checked. And to make sure that all of these optimizations are applied to Fortnite every single time, simply go to file, then click on config profile and then under there click on create config profile. Name it anything that you want, I'm gonna go ahead and name it Fortnite 2. Then make sure to check the use current settings as this profile and then hit ok. And now if I go under file and config profile, you can see that the Fortnite 2 profile is active. And for this to properly work, you will need to keep it minimized while playing the game. Next up, we will be deep loading and optimizing the windows and to ease this task, we will be using the CTT. Now I know that a lot of you guys may have already used it, but even if you did, I highly recommend that you use it again because after windows updates or even Fortnite updates, a lot of these tweaks can get reset. And also because the tool keeps getting updated too, it does have better optimizations every time. So to use it, go down to your start menu and search for PowerShell, then run it as administrator and once it opens up, simply copy and paste this command from the description and hit enter. Once this opens up, go to the tweaks tab and inside of here, if you don't want to customize these settings like me, simply go ahead and click on the standard button and click on run tweaks. However, I do like to customize all of these settings to get the most performance out of my PC. For that, we will go ahead and of course create a system restore point, delete all the temporary files, disable consumer features, disable telemetry, activity history and all of this good stuff. However, one more thing that I want to disable is actually recall and if you are on a laptop, then you should also check the set hibernation as default option. For desktop PCs, these are the settings that I recommend for essential tweaks. Inside of the advanced tweaks, I always like to check the Adobe Network Block, Adobe Debloat, prefer IPv4 over IPv6 since disabling IPv6 can cause a few issues, then disable background apps as well as disable Microsoft Copilot and yeah, that's basically it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on run tweaks and all of these tweaks should be running right here and it also creates a system restore point so you can revert these settings whenever you want. And once all the tweaks have been applied, simply go ahead and close out of it. Then moving on to the Nvidia control panel optimizations. For the AMD folks, you can go ahead and skip up to the next chapter in the video but for the Nvidia ones, make sure that you always have the latest driver so go ahead and update your graphics driver right now. Then in the Nvidia control panel, click the use advanced 3D image settings and hit apply. Then press take me there and here we will apply the best Nvidia control panel settings for Fortnite. So image sharpening should be off, ambient occlusion should also be turned off, anastropic filtering should be off and all types of anti-aliasing should be turned off since anti-aliasing is mostly used to smoothen out the pixels and edges and can negatively impact the performance. For CUDA GPUs, just select your main GPU and for low latency mode, just keep it at off for Fortnite since we want to use the Nvidia reflex within the Fortnite settings which will override this anyway. So just set it to off. Max frame rate should be turned off since we don't want to limit our FPS from here. And then for power management mode, just set it to prefer maximum performance. For shader cache size, just set it to the driver's default. Texture filtering and anastropic sample option should be off. Negative load bias should be allow. And for quality, set it to high performance and set the trilinear optimizations to on. For threaded optimizations, I just like to keep it at on. But 
but for some people it may work better if turned off. You need to test this one for yourself or just set it to auto if not sure. Triple buffering should be offed as well and VSync is a no brainer so set it to off. Moving on to the AMD optimization, simply go ahead and go to the AMD software and also make sure that you have updated to your latest graphics driver. Then for Fortnite go under gaming, then click on Fortnite, inside of here set the graphics profile to performance, then Radeon NT lag should be enabled but what we are more concerned with is the advanced settings. So scroll down to the advanced settings and inside of here make sure that the texture filtering quality is set to performance and surface format optimization is enabled. It basically means that the AMD driver will itself choose the format that it wants to display and this can really help you with FPS boost in Fortnite. Then click on this little settings icon, then go under preferences and make sure that all of these toggles are turned off since we don't want any of these overlays to show up in our game. And that's basically it for AMD users. Now let's move on to the safest method to overclock your GPU without overheating it, without breaking it and it's a 100% safe. What we will be doing is once again using the same software that we downloaded that was MSI Afterburner. So simply go ahead and open it up and once it opens up, we will be using this to overclock our GPU. Now this method will work for both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. However, for AMD GPUs, I will also show you a one-click solution to completely overclock your GPU which is even easier than this method. However, for Nvidia users, there is no such method so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. So if I revert my settings, you can see that my core clock is at 11.30. Now for every GPU, you can easily increase this core clock by 25 to 50 without encountering any heating issues or any other issues. So what I recommend is simply go ahead and add 25 to this and then add 50 to this. For me, I kept testing it and at around 11.90, that was my safest spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 11 and then 90 and then hit enter and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this check mark. Once you have increased your core clock, I also want you to increase the power limit. For this, I would recommend adding 15%. So go from 0 to 15 and then hit enter. You can also increase the fan speed and set it to custom. If you want to check my fan settings, then I'm gonna go to settings, go to fan, then click on enable user defined automatic fan control and this is my curve that I personally use. So at 25 degrees I have set to 50% fan speed and then at 85 degrees I have set to 100% fan speed. So you can copy this one if you want to lower your temperatures and then hit ok. Your fans should ramp up quite a bit after applying this setting. Then hit check once more and now what you need to do is go into a game or two and monitor your temps. For Nvidia GPUs the temperatures should never exceed 80 degrees in Celsius while for AMD GPUs the temperatures should never exceed 90 so if they are exceeding then go ahead and bump this down, bump this down a bit as well and that's it. However since I am using an AMD GPU on this PC, I'm gonna go ahead and reset the settings from here and then go ahead and open up the AMD software. Inside of here simply go to performance, then go to tuning and then click on this little button which says overclock GPU. It will give you a warning but all you need to do is simply click on proceed, then it will automatically calculate the best overclock for your GPU which in my case is once again 1190, I'm gonna hit ok and it also automatically adjusts the fan speed as well as the power consumption so you have nothing to worry about. Now you can close out of this and that's it. At this point we are already hitting 240 fps in Fortnite however these last few windows settings which a lot of people overlook got us over 270 fps in Fortnite starting with the windows settings. So open up the start menu and search for windows security then go ahead and open it up. Inside of here go to the device security tab then under core isolation details make sure that memory integrity is turned off. It will require a restart which we will be doing later so simply close out of this and close out of this as well. Then go ahead and open up the windows settings once more and this time go to gaming, make sure that the game bar is turned off and it should be, then under game mode make sure that the game mode is turned on. If you have the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling option make sure that you turn it on. Then click on browse for this option, go ahead and browse to your fortnite directory then click on this.exe and hit add. Then go to options and set it to high performance, hit save. Go back to settings once more and this time go to system then scroll all the way down to about and click on device manager. Once it opens up, scroll down to the system devices and expand it down. Then right click on the high precision event timer and disable device, hit yes and it should help you a bit with the input delay reduction. Then under here, go ahead and click on the advanced system settings, then click on settings once more, then click on advanced and then make sure the adjust for best performance of is set to programs, then hit ok and ok once more. And now it's time to enable and activate the ultimate performance power plan since it is the best power plan 
then that comes packed in with Windows. So open up the start menu and search for CMD, then run it as administrator. Then copy and paste this command from the description and hit enter. And as you can see, that the ultimate performance power plan should be added. Now in order to activate it, go down to the Windows settings once more, go to system, then click on power and sleep, and then click on additional power settings. Inside of here, under the hide additional plans, you should be able to see the ultimate performance power plan. So simply check it, then click on change plan settings, and make sure to set this to never as well, then hit save changes. Now you can close out of this, and by applying all of these optimizations, we literally went from 100 FPS to over 270 FPS on this low end PC. But if you want to get even more performance out of your PC, then go ahead and check out this video right now.